Hello, people. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Zubi. Today we have Zubi Music, people. How you doing? What's up? So, Zubi, almost three, almost thirty thousand subs, three hundred over three hundred videos. That is a lot of production and not enough credits. I think. What is what is that? You suffer from some cancel culture, YouTube cancel. Culture. <laughs> <laughs> did, sorry, did you say I don't have I don't have three hundred thousand videos? I have three thousand three hundred thousand followers across my channels, but um, no, you I, have I thirty. You have thirty thousand subs. Okay, on YouTube, you mean? Yeah, on yeah, YouTube. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and and over three hundred videos, like a three hundred. Oh, 300. oh, sorry, I thought I thought you said three hundred thousand. I was like, whoa, I don't think I've done that many. <laughs> no, I was talking about the. The subs. I need to change this. I always make sometimes myself and I confuse other people saying all these numbers together in the beginning. But uh, Zubi Music, rapper, author, uh, first British woman to cha champion of deadlift. Uh, <laughs> I, I, can I say that? Maybe maybe she talks to me now. Like I've tried to talk many times to uh, Blair White and she never gave me a chance. And now that I'm talking to a trans woman, maybe she gives me a chance. <laughs> maybe so. If you can't get, you can't get Blair, you can talk to, um, you know, I, I'm, gen I'm gender fluid specifically. So I'm not, I'm not always a woman, but when I lift weights, I do tend to identify as a woman because then, you know, it's easier to set records that way. There was at least a question that I had when the conversation started about trans and I did not know what trans really is, was, and I was like, okay, so trans is just when the person is transitioning and then after they finish, they don't call themselves trans anymore. That was a question that I had. But then I understand that we have the difference in the trans woman for to a biological woman. And... Mm -hmm. And that is one of the discussions we're probably going to have here with all the <laughs> all around the, your lifting over 500 pounds. <laughs> the video is amazing. How many how many views do you have in that video or, or not you? Is that a Joe Rogan clip? Uh, no, the original video was posted to my Twitter and it got over two and a half million views on the original <laughs> video on Twitter. And then, um, I mean, it got covered everywhere. As you mentioned, Joe Rogan did talk about it. I was on his podcast last year. It was on TV in lots of different countries. It went viral also on Instagram and on Facebook. The thing went crazy. I don't know. Millions and millions of people saw that. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, you have been on Joe Rogan and so many other much bigger news mm -hmm. and, and interviews. I, like, I've seen, a, I, I've made a list of the, you have been interviewed by Dave Rubin, Joe Rogan, Ben Shapiro, Candace Owen, all the people that I actually dream of interviewing okay. <laughs> a day, one day, you know, because I'm a fan of all of them and yeah. I watch all of their stuff and I have my personal fan questions that I would like to throw <laughs> on them. So, and you actually have a huge podcast that I'm a big fan and I have to catch up on, on oh, thank the you. guys you have interviewed because like, I don't know many of them, but they're a bunch of them, like I have interviewed Peter Bogosian that I'm a big fan and have read the books. And mm -hmm. But there are guys that I still have to contact and have contact in. I know you close friends of Count Dankula that I have tried to contact many ways and even like talking to his wife on Twitter. Mm -hmm. And uh, you have talked to, you have interviewed on your podcast, Dave Rubin and mm -hmm. Joy Villa, that she's oh, yeah, super yeah. awesome with the 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 MAGA dress, and <laughs> then Krush, Crenshaw, and Gad said, Gad said mm -hmm. actually refused to talk to me, and I was like, okay, even even said something about me harassing him through messages, and I was like, I don't think that is possible, you can just block me, or I say no, and I will stop. Anyways, <laughs> now this is really complicated, this uh, sensitivity on the, you know, on the online conversation, so what have you experienced as being a trans woman and breaking records? Uh, did you get more views and more attention after that? What? Was oh gosh, yeah. I mean, when I posted that video, I had I had nineteen thousand followers on Twitter when I posted that video, and I've now got more than two hundred and twenty thousand. So it was um it was a big catalyst for a lot of people dis uh, discovering me. 
it wasn't everything. Obviously, there's a lot more to me than, uh, you know, a single nine second video that people found funny. But that's mm -hmm. why people came and then they stuck around and I was able to, you know, get all these opportunities to do all these cool stuff and meet all these cool people because people saw that I had something to offer beyond that single viral video. And, you know, I've had tons and tons of posts go viral since then. Um, more people have discovered my podcast, discovered my music, discovered my book, discovered all the stuff that is my sort of main real work. But people yeah, always need to discover you through thought. something. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot there. But all that work I'd put in over the past decade, that sort of, you know, the light was shown on it when people discovered me through that video. So these things happen in weird ways, but uh, it's a blessing. Yeah, and the, which one was what what catch up more after being a trans woman and breaking records? <laughs> Sorry, what what was the question there? What what catch up more after that? After the attention being, you know, like you said, you was like almost like a troll move to mm. to do the the thing about the deadlift about the breaking record as trans woman but then after that what do you been catching up more like people like more of oh, your oh i see it's like is yeah. that the bodybuilding the book mm. uh you know the music rapper mm -hmm. can you can you tell us a little bit about how did you become all those things like you're probably going to have to go farther and back <laughs> in your history but uh, yeah, yeah please yeah. we have all the time <laughs> yeah, no problem. So um, I started rapping when I was in university. So I, st I studied at Oxford University. When I was in my first year there studying computer science, I just started rapping for fun, just doing it as a hobby to begin with. I started recording a couple of songs in um, my friend's dorm room in his little music studio there. And I would just send the songs out to my friends, to my family. And, you know, people, I, I got a lot of positive feedback. And then after I'd been rapping for about eight or nine months, I put a collection of these songs together and I made uh, my first album, my first CD, which was called Commercial Underground. So I promoted that independently and distributed it, you know, through my just hand to hand uh, going around, went around my university and Oxford as a city in general, and then eventually branched out to other cities. And I ended up selling a couple thousand copies of that CD while I was still in university. So after I graduated, I did my music full time for one year. I released my second album, The Unknown Celebrity. And then I moved to London. I started working in London in the corporate world as a management consultant while doing my music stuff on the side. And then in 2011, I took the big jump and I went and I pursued my music full time. So I've been a full time. I've been self-employed since November 2011. And so for many years, everything was just all about the music. The focus was on the music, um, then my merchandise and live events, gigs and stuff like that. And then in 2018... I started to just do a little bit more social commentary. So I used to totally keep my sort of views and opinions and politics and cultural views, all that stuff. I used to sort of keep it off of my social media and only discuss things like that in private. And then in 2018, I just started opening up a little bit more about that and joining in the conversation more and noticed that people liked what I had to say and realized that the way I think and the way I word things uh, both within and outside of my music is different from the norm. So I started doing that more and more. As you mentioned, you know, this leads up to that deadlift video, which was just a tweet I put out there like any other tweet. I put a lot of I put a lot of content out there. And then this one just, you know, within five minutes, I knew that I'd created something. I was like, okay, this one is uh, this is getting some I mean, I ha within 10 minutes, it had like 10,000 views. And I was like, okay, this is this is crazy. But I went to bed that night. It had like 350,000 views. I woke up in the morning, half a million And it just kept growing and growing. My audience just kept growing. And I just started getting so many people discovering me, reaching out to me. And yeah, from that moment in February 2019, stuff hasn't really been the same. You know, my audience has 10 x since that period. The amount of people who know me has gone up so much, both nationally and internationally. And it's led to so many cool opportunities to go on all those podcasts that you mentioned, to grow my own one and my own work, release my first book. Um, traveled to the UK, sorry, traveled to the USA. I spent nine weeks there. I went to the White, got invited to the White House twice. I got invited to the Pentagon. I was on Fox News a couple of times. I was just getting all these crazy opportunities to do all this cool stuff. And um, yeah, I'm now on the radar of a lot of different people. It's put me on a different echelon in terms of my fan base and the amount of reach and influence that I have and everything. So I'm still in the process of, um, you know, still growing, but also learning how to 
learning how to deal with a much bigger audience than I've ever had before. I can imagine it's crazy, like the inflation of a hundred thousand subs in half a year, and and how many people actually did not understand your message on the transgender rights and phobia? Like actually, I I've seen many of your interviews, like you being interviewed by other people. Yeah, and. and I would like to touch more on like your past, like, you know, to be raised in Saudi Arabia. I've watched you on Dave Rubin and I had many other questions, but we have sh shorter time. And uh, on the, I, I saw you mention there that a lot of people actually called you transphobe because, because of what you did, what you, what you have done. And, mm -hmm. uh, and I think it's more on opening the question on fairness that of you all about that. And, uh, and talk about protecting women on their rights that were acquired throughout history. And that's mm -hmm. why we made all th those games and ev pretty much everything a woman side. So can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. Look, 99% of people understood the purpose. You're always going to get a tiny, tiny minority of people who either are just too stupid to understand what you're actually trying to do or in more cases they're trying to misrepresent you right you mentioned the word transphobic and people like to try to throw an ism or a phobia on anybody you know this is a very sort of left-wing social justice sort of tactic which is try to just call somebody a disparaging label stick a label onto them and then you no longer need to pay attention to what they're saying and you don't need any sort of substantial, logical, or rational argument against what they're doing. You just call them racist, call them transphobe, call them sexist, call them whatever, and then hopefully they think that you then don't need to contend with what they're actually saying. So this is something I've seen happen to a lot of people over the years. I mean, I don't care what label anyone tries to stick on me because I'm not any of those things. And I think a mistake a lot of people make is trying to defend themselves against false accusations all the time. I don't even bother, right? I just... um. You know, I, if anything, I'll just switch it on people. I'll say, hey, I'm actually transgender. So to call me a transphobe makes you transphobic. Um, and, you know, people couldn't weren't really able to go against what I did in my deadlift because it was a checkmate because they've been preaching that a woman is anybody who identifies as a woman. So if I self-identify as a woman, they then, based on their own rules, they don't then have a right to question me on whether or not I'm actually a woman because they said that you don't need any evidence it's personal it's subjective it's just based on your own feelings so by their own rules you know i am actually a transgender woman so anyone who doesn't follow that ideology can be like you know this guy's not a woman he's he's a man or whatever but based on their own rules if they were to say that they would be being transphobic right because if someone else says that they identify as a woman and someone goes no but that's a man then they'll say that it's transphobic. So I just got them to, you know, trying to force people to sort of play by, play by their own rules and their own definitions. And uh, yeah, naturally people don't like that. But it's fun. Oh, sorry, I've, I've lost, I've lost you. I can't hear you. Oh, sorry. Okay, there we, there yeah, we go. I, yeah, I'm we go. mute. Okay. So, yeah, no, it's pretty funny the way that uh, we see people, in fact, doing this. Like, oh, identity is just something you can. It's so fluid that you can change anytime. You mm -hmm. just need to say it. But then they make such a big deal of genitalia, of like making, you know, like of the person's genitalia when we cannot even talk about this. And then I was like, okay, I guess <clears throat> yesterday I was trying to, to put all this together and at some moment, uh, replying to some hate followers I have on one of my videos, it's against me, so no FAP movement. And most of the attacks are that I cannot talk about fapping because I don't have a penis. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, as penis gives you some extra th thoughts, philosophy, credits, you know, capacity you of, of thinking or philosophy. whatever, rights <laughs> of talking. Of, and I was like, okay, I have the answer for these people now. Nobody. If gender is fluid and you don't even need to really change your, your gender, you know, your genitalia to call yourself the other gender, I can just come out and say like, I'm a man now or 
a man can come out and say, I'm a woman, and you don't even need to ch change your genitalia. Why are they making such a big deal of me talking about this? Because of whatever, assuming my genitalia. Mm. <laughs> okay. So that is almost crazy. It's like, it's such a loophole. It's like, it's so dissonant. And you know, even if you keep approaching them with their own, like you said, with their, their own fundaments, they have no principles. That is the truth. <laughs> <laughs> they will like it. No, I will sit over my, you know, my problem the same way and talk about yours. Or you know, like people going out on the streets and yelling at other people that they are going outside because coronavirus oh. is dangerous. What are you going? What are you doing here outside? It's like, what are you doing here this time? <laughs> you know, like, so I, I go outside. outside because yeah. I need to go and. I don't think we should be going through this fear that that big big fear that go, is going around. So I'm Corona, just coronavirus doing my is becoming work, is becoming know? its own religion very quickly. So <laughs> it's everything online nowadays is very ritualistic. It's it just is. like it really follow, is. It really blind is. Follow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, and uh, I I like that I learned the the woman's sides of the olympics and games are actually the part where it's protected from men so they like you said like a woman could come and compete with men because we probably could find some woman that could beat men but they have no. their protected cath <laughs> category <laughs> yeah that actually is like, yeah <laughs> not at not at the olympic level not they, at the olympic level no chance no chance yeah actually i have i have into a discussion where i was defending that men is betting and everything and <laughs> <laughs> okay you you and, said it not me etymology. and in general and then i was talking about the average and then i explained that yeah we can find one example of one woman that is more that is stronger or taller or you know than the average and oh, maybe of course, of course. but it will be one individual and then we're talking about the average and then yeah but uh, of course I, I didn't offend nobody because i was talking to tyrone i just talked to him yesterday he's a street epistemologist and he's always like just trying to explore and try to find a more accurate way to to find the truth and sure. and we were and i actually was making jokes of like uh if you see the one example was like the miss the the what, what is that the, the beauty industry the miss world this year was a trans woman so therefore men are better than women even in the woman's categories of oh beauty yeah yeah well, yeah when you get men you know biological <laughs> and, men uh, winning women's competitions that's a I, I don't. I don't know. The Western world is a, <laughs> is a strange place right now. But hopefully, the coronavirus will reset some of this stuff, and we can kind of go back to normal. Hopefully, I don't know. My husband was like, "What? What are you saying? Men are better than everything. What are you doing?" And I was like, "Yeah, I, I fuck men. You're the one that's sucking here." <laughs> 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 I got the best. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> jokes of art <laughs> so let's come back to reality and these spectrums of biology identity and sexuality that is also another problem no like every time we try to i, mention... I love how I've, i love how i've become some sort of subject matter expert on this topic i just find it funny <laughs> <laughs> I, I do so many interviews and people asking me all this stuff about like gender ideology i'm like Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I actually think it's interesting that because you brought it up, I think yeah. it opens this discussion, you know, and I, I, I guess you like a little bit on this, uh, the conversation, because every time we try to bring like, this is not important, it should not be important that way. And that is why I, I keep trying to say like, it should be like a religion. It's, yeah. Let's try to keep politics secular of religion and identity politics not, not you possible. know it's not possible <laughs> if you if you remove religion then it gets substituted with something else which is what the west has been contending with for at least a couple decades now that's the truth not not for every single person on an individual level but on a yeah. societal on a collective level what is going to happen is that politics is going to become the new religion which has happened or some other ideology or idea or way no, of thinking. No, actually, I think it. this is the discussion that mm -hmm. we have. Ayn Rand have responded it in her books 
year, decades ago mm. because she saw this being confronted like, oh, the scientists, they are immorals because they don't have God. And was like, no, there is such an objective moral. If you listen to Sun Harris, if you listen to Yaron Brook and Ayn Rand, read Ayn Rand, you're going to see that there is a very consonant with science and spirituality. Because Sun Harris is still very spiritual, uh, talking a bit about the spirituality. I understand this the importance of the side of the spirituality to replace the superstition of people and the traditions on here's, the here's, way that they feel like it, that, that could unify much more than religions nowadays. Because what happens is like we have too many religions and many religions that are not consonant. They are all dissonant to each other. They even if it, even if you take like the evangelicals, they mm -hmm. all kind of follow the same Bible type, but they still don't have the same morals and the same, you know, and that is the subjectivity of the pragmatism and the postmodernism that you talk about when you talk about coexist. Oh, everything is possible, everything is true, and subjective subjective morals mm -hmm. by religious standards you know because yeah, i mean but uh, by atheistic standards morals are even more no no there is no such a, a no but there is no such a atheistic standards because atheists is just don't believe in god yes i, I know but that, that's i'm saying that's what and, that's what makes the, it and that is the thing that is like you can believe in other things and that is is like we 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 are not all the same some people don't believe god but they believe gnomes and aliens oh, yes, i know yeah, and yeah. and fairies and other things so we cannot actually is is the what uh, some atheists big atheists have talked about like we cannot herd cats there, no. it, we did no, no, not no. find a way yet no, to, to put them all together no that's why so i say that you know I, something I do is think and i wish i could talk to some harris one day hope so <laughs> <laughs> to talk about how we do need a leadership on standards of object of morals because one of the things that we can put together is like, what is the evolutive, what is the evolutive advantage that animals that don't even think like humans have acquired throughout existence mm. for all these generations that we recognize and say like, what is this? Is this love? Is this compassion that they help each other? And we have done a lot of studies, you know, into in in, in labs talking about similarities and even like on gender theory, you know, about the difference on, on race and, and the banalize or, or make it normal to have other people from different races around. It is a good thing because you see on the rats that they will help, help each other as soon as they, or they look the same or they are used to see that type of different color or different pattern. And, uh, and that shows more that evolutively we will help inside our own uh, species. And that's what happens with dogs, with rats. And when we see those examples, we try to explain with other things that are supernatural or, or not, uh, let's say, feelings that we try to like is abstract, but we do know how it works in the brain chemically. So, and we know that the, the compassion and the sympathy and the empathy, they are chemistry working in the brain. There are endorphins that make us feel like this. And that's why we feel good to be good and we, we do more of it and we help the same. And the wrong idea, I think what is being disseminated and and a lot of people just like it. It's like a meme that is spreading much faster because people think people are bad. And people keep saying like, oh, we humans are so evil. We are so bad. We destroy everything. We destroy the environment. Like, let's think a little bit harder and, mm -hmm. and honestly rationalize that we actually are very good. We are trying to help the environment. We are always worried about this. The climate change conversation and the... It, the global warming is not new. It did not come out with with Greta. It, I have heard about that 20 years before Greta. Mm -hmm. Okay, before and, and we are always trying to make it better. We're always trying to compensate and minimize our our damage, and we are always trying to help the the species. Uh, the, the extinction of species. It has happened to the whole 
dinosaurs, this generation, uh, uh, species. And, and it has happened to other species. It's something that apparently is natural. We still try to, to, to fix it. We, tr we still try to stop it. You know, I think we are awesome. I'm a very humanist in this side. And like, I'm always trying to defend. And I think that is what we should be talking more and mm. saying and also listening more to the media. Like, no, listen, if most of us were actually bad, it would be chaotic. It's not. How can we stand on the streets and talk to strangers and ask for information and help each other? Because we are awesome. Of course, we mm. are able to good and bad things but that all that all comes from the individual and what makes the difference is how you use your brain and that is very scientific not spiritual but i can explain for the people that believe in spirituality what makes them feel how do i feel so good helping people it's like those are endorphins you feel like that when you listen to a music you like when you go to a show when you're in mm -hmm. a crowded place when you're in the church helping and hugging people and having that moment you're gonna feel that in the show and you're gonna feel that sometimes all alone just listening to some song or talking to someone you know eating chocolate <laughs> i don't mm -hmm. know having sex you know there are explanations for this we know very well and i understand people still need the religiosity the spirituality as a culture but uh, i don't know i think it, there is much more for people to be curious and and answers to be questions to be answered that sometimes all the religiosity all, it doesn't matter which god or which bible or which which story go read all you know i'm totally for like a, a religious uh studies that mm -hmm. we will study all the books and talk about all the gods and all the superstition great no problem but we should be basing our lives more in reason and using those myths as like, okay, there are just traditions. Let's not follow. Like I, just yesterday, I had a big discussion about the mutilation on boys, like doing circumcision on just born boys, when this is actually a medical procedure that should be saved for whenever you need, if you need throughout your life. You know, so it's like, it's a lot of talk on the religious. I was Trying to keep that for the end of the conversation because I would imagine <laughs> that you would disagree because I know you very Jordan Peterson, Driven, Dave Rubin, and all these people that I also follow. I'm, but I'm I disagree. More, I'm, I'm probably the... more I'm more religious than both of them. <laughs> and I do see a lot of people that have gone even like backwards, like more religious, with the idea of like we need religious standards to fight other religious standards like no we don't need we actually need to drop all that because that is just another wall created by humans the reality is themselves the reality is that if the western world is to drop its religious standards then it will be conquered by a stronger religious standard i think that's the reality um people don't like hearing that but i think no i actually see that truth. like you i don't know if you know the secular jihadists and the atheist republic, there are a lot of movements of mm -hmm. atheists that actually move to secular talk. You know, <laughs> secular talk is another show, but no, move mm -hmm. towards to a secular conversation. You know, yeah. and <laughs> and uh, yeah, and I think it's 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 strong because the own movement of atheists have been broken because of the liberal left and the crash on inside uh, look human human own. beings are tri human beings are tri <laughs> human beings are tribal human beings are tribal and human exactly. beings seek meaning and they seek that's purpose. what i was saying like so keep creating walls to yeah, segregate themselves there, there's never going to be like i don't care what it doesn't matter whether it's secular or it's religious it does it to me all of that stuff is i think it's i honestly think it's naive to think that if you we lived in some sort of like truly say secular society that Everyone no, we don't. Would, yeah. no, no, we no, I know, I know we don't, right? To. But a lot, a lot of, I'm not saying you're saying this, a lot of atheists I've spoken to, they have this sort of, they have this sort of utopian idea that, okay, if we can just like get rid, you know, get rid of this religion and, you know, get rid of superstition or whatever people call it, get rid of the concept of God and belief. No, no, that, no, no, no so, some, some, some people, some people think, some people think that this will lead to like a purely sort of rational and more equal and fair and reasonable and logical. And I'm like, no, no, it won't. It won't, right? Because 
not every atheist is is Sam Harris, right? If every atheist were Sam Harris, then okay, yeah, maybe that might work. But it's like, no, all that's going to happen is that people are going to fall into... It's already happening. We're seeing it right now. People are falling into new superstitions and different ideologies and fighting over different reasons. Maybe before, oh, yeah, you know... yeah, they clash because <laughs> you know? of veganism now or, <laughs> or, or even LGBTQ... Of course. Plus was a clash inside its own left agenda because when you come and say like... Uh, there, are, there are a lot of atheists now that even their shows talk about, oh, if you don't recognize that a man can just become a woman, you're mm -hmm. just transphobic. And I was how like, is that, how is that not oh, a religious doctrine? It depends doctrine. on a lot of things. <laughs> that, that's a religious doctrine. If, you want, if you're trying to force me to believe something that is, I mean, you're, these are the people telling me science, 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 and then they're trying to make me believe something that is totally anti-science, you know, telling me that I can be a woman. Like, that's an, that's anti-science. <laughs> Right. You're the one saying that, oh, I believe in God. So I'm the one who's not making sense. I'm like, you're, you're not making sense with science. Right. Yours is directly disprovable. Right. <laughs> you know, so, so it's <laughs> weird. It's like there's something in human beings that even the most people who like to think that they're the most rational and most purely logical and whatever thinkers, oftentimes they will still hold beliefs and have a level of cognitive dissonance of, you know, I, I've said this before. People people like science when it suits them. You know, if science, if science yeah, suits somebody's is something... argument or position, then people really like science. But when the science goes against it, you'll Peter notice Bogosian how quickly said that on his yeah. book, how <laughs> oh, really? we, we, we pick, you know, not pick yeah. <laughs> on whatever to, we, we try to actually, we do the opposite way. It's not that we're looking for data to find out what is the truth. We no. believe what is our mm -hmm. truth and we go for things that will back that belief. And that's just you know? reality. Yeah. And it's, it's uh, yeah, that's why it's so polarized and divided, you know? Mm -hmm. And people are like, always like, oh, you pro-abortion or you pro-life. And, and those become like names that are like people try to even avoid because it's like, mm -hmm. I try to avoid this because I always say like, I never can pick a side. I am pro-choice. I am pro-life. So I'm always confused. Like, uh, can I be a, half, a little bit of both? You know, mm. can you talk about it? <laughs> sort of, maybe. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah. no, yeah, no, not specific about this. Uh, uh, the, it's always about the, the straw man. And even like to be leftist nowadays, there are people that refuse the term left because became like almost... It's almost offensive nowadays. You call someone <laughs> left. It's like, hey, that's, I'm not that's, that's, their, that's their own fault. Feminism is another one. Yeah. I have yeah. a friend that she is a feminist. And sometimes when the talk is a little high about feminism, she, she takes it out of her profile. And sometimes she comes back with, yeah, I'm a feminist <laughs> again. And but not one of those ones. The thing I just don't like is how the feminists are sexist in their fights. You know, like it's, they are so exclusionary. Like, for example, she she made this feminist post and she only shared with girls. And I was like, oh, see how exclusionary it is. It's always very sexist. Mm -hmm. And since I'm an equalitarian, equalitarian, I will refuse to repost. I will not support any sexist movement. <laughs> okay, I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> look, I mean, look, st stuff is... The reality is, like we've already said, look, human beings are tribal. Human beings have a range of different beliefs. We're extremely complicated. There are over 7 billion of us on Earth living right now. There, there's, You're never going to get everybody on the same page of, of everything, right? It's, it's totally, you, you can't get two people on the same page on everything. Wow. So my ultimate view when it boils down to it is, you know, I love having intellectual conversations, abstract conversations and everything, but... Look, when it comes down to sort of the behavioral fundamentals, you know, I think most people's core beliefs sort of come back to the same thing, whether they derive them from their religion or from their society or their culture or logic or reason or some combination of all of these, then, you know, most, it, most of it boils down to, you know, the golden rule, treat, treat your neighbor as yourself, be kind to other people, help other people, don't physically harm, kill, maim other people. Don't take other people's stuff without their permission. Try to tell the truth. You know, like follow the law. Like It kind of comes down to the basic things because if you're going to have so many people in a town, in a city, in a country, whatever, living together and interacting with each other and you don't want them to, you know, tear each other limb from limb and be fighting each other and, you know, shooting each other in the streets and stuff, then, you know, we all need to agree on 
these basics. And then the layer above it or the layer below it, you know, people can have different ideas and theories and thoughts and beliefs or whatever. But ultimately, what somebody else believes, I don't really care unless they are then trying to either use that belief to harm other people or discriminate against other people or they're using it to or they're trying to force you know in an authoritarian manner they're trying to force other people to believe all the same things that they believe right if people cannot do those things then most people are cool and you you see that in everyday life you said you know you go outside maybe not right now because people are quarantined <laughs> you, you know you you go outside in any big city you see all different kinds of people walking past each other and everyone's cordial and it's decent and it's civil and it's and it's and it took a while to get there right it hasn't always been like yeah. that so yeah. it's like look we can people can coexist i might think that someone else's views are crazy someone else may think that my views are crazy they may think i'm crazy that i believe in you know uh, uh, you know, God had a son who who died on a cross and walked on water. Someone might be like, dude, that is totally crazy. How can you believe that? Right. And I might think that they're crazy because they think that, you know, there are infinite genders and a man can, you know, become a woman if in his brain he feels like, well, you know, like, you know, like they can believe some other stuff. They may believe in astrology and healing crystals and tarot cards and numerology and whatever. And I might think like, okay, I don't believe in all that, but it doesn't matter. Right. If we treat each other well, if we're kind to each other, if we are, you know, friendly, decent and charitable towards one another, then you know what? Stuff is good. Stuff is fine. I so thinking of George Carlin, oh, when yeah. you were talking of all this thing before, I was like, oh, that's so George Carlin. You know, like religion is like a it's like a penis. You can't have it. Just don't <laughs> stick on other people. <laughs> and that's a little bit on secular. Really but the people don't understand what the secular means. And that is what, what the secular means is like it is totally for a multicultural community because it defends everybody's private right to have and profess their own religion in their private sector, but keep the public area safe from any religion so you don't benefit any religion. And that is what is secular. And uh, it's pretty different from being a atheist country mm -hmm. or not allowing religion, you know, that yeah, yeah. actually no, I know, is I know what you mean. of the people that think, oh, atheists want to burn Bibles. Like, no, I actually think the people should read their Bible more mm -hmm. and stop saying that they take their morals from there because if that is what they do, it would be bad. It would be more like, okay, when I used to read the Bible, I was like, what? I actually started reading more when I was becoming an atheist and I was like, okay, we should use this as like a Things we should not do it. Two mm -hmm. bad examples in there. Too much immoralities. And, and not just about one Bible or the other. Like, read all of them, you know, feel the Holy Spirit, hear Holy Spirit from all the gods. But what I normally say, and I've heard uh, probably Hitchin saying, everything that you can get without religion, you, the religion becomes not a necessary way or mean to get it and mm. that it's moral because we have we have confucius before religious uh, morals secular morals that are like just don't do to other people what you don't would not like them to do to yourself and that was how my parents actually gave me morals instead of going through religious moralities that were like 10 commandments that half of them are just to praise the God that uh, supposed to not kill, but instructs you to kill. That is full of double standards and dissonance that starts with the opening the door for people to say like, I did this because of God. You know, I actually have a friend, one of the first people I interviewed in the channel. He is a, an atheist that is a comedian and he made a comic pastor evangelic parody character that he's, he talks, he reads the Bible and verses and talk about situations mm -hmm. and, you know, in a very honest way and says mm -hmm. like, I'm the only pastor that speaks the truth. And in the end of his videos, he normally uh, denounces a pastor, a real pastor evangelical in Brazil mm -hmm. that committed some crime using the Bible's, the scriptures as justifications. Like, oh, so, you know, like he, raped three girls in the same family, got them pregnant and said it was God. It was just yeah, a miracle. Look, this, yeah, but look, you're always going to have... You're, are, you're, gonna, like, oh, you're, you're always going to have crap. You're always going to have people who do, who do bad stuff 
and who do it either with no justification or they'll find some justification or rationalization for it, right? There's nowhere in the Bible where it tells you that you should you should rape children, right? Someone's doing that and then saying, oh, the God told me to do it or the Bible, like, no, that's, that's, a, that's a heretic, right? That's just a bad person. And cruel people don't need a, you know, you'll often hear people say this thing that religion makes is the only thing that makes good people do bad things. That's total nonsense, right? I don't know why people mm -hmm. always parrot it. It's like, no, you can make people can do bad things for no reason or they can defend it with any belief system or ideology. And religion is not needed for that, right? People, if you look in the last hundred years, who have committed the greatest atrocities, right? No, it's been I, I totally agree with you. But I would say that there is one bad thing that religion brings after that, that people in the prisons, mm -hmm. they are very religious because the pastors and the religious people be, believe and pray, praise that, that you just need to ask God for forgiveness mm -hmm. and then you're going to go to heaven. Mm -hmm. And that makes people be, you know, at least clean their mind or their conscience and they feel like they oh i'm gonna go to heavens now and i don't even need they don't even need to say sorry to the family of the vi their victims you know i have talked about this with my brother because he's a strong evangelical future pastor probably mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and and i say it's like this is so immoral but if we go to the standards of objective morals and science we know why you should be good. And it's not like because I told so. Do it's we? Because like it is counterproductive and counterintuitive to live in a society where you're bad. Some people come to say this trauma and like, oh, no, you know, some people can just steal and go, you know, and get over with it. Mm -hmm. And it's like, yeah, but what? how do they actually live? It's not a good way mm -hmm. to have to live as a criminal hiding or being persecuted by the police and or by other people, even if we did not have the system, let's take mm. the political system and the government to protect the police to protect. We know that in a society, people that would do bad to other people would be persecuted, we would be punished in some way. And we live have we have lived like that, like you said, mm -hmm. people still doing bad because of course immoral people will always exist. Of course. Bad people will always exist. I believe a lot of bad people do Bad is small bad things, not because they're bad, it's just because they did not think enough. It's lack of philosophy of thinking. And mm -hmm. the philosophy would be just like it's the individual. The individual it means individual property of yourself and your things. So just keep that limit, you know. My my rights mm -hmm. stop when your rights start. And that mm -hmm. means even this mug. Yeah, but not or, not everybody even believes that. No, but you it's can not see that easy. now. I mean, you, you and can that's see what I'm saying. It's like I think a lot of people did not think of that. So yeah. maybe what we're missing, we're lacking, it's philosophy. You know, it's mm -hmm. a little bit more on but talking the, on the, philosophy the thing, and hmm. identity on on property, on yeah. rights. But even on that, right? Who sets the rules? Because even if you look, if you look at different political philosophies, they all say different things here, right? If you if you look at oh, Marxist, no, that or, is the only principle. Yeah, that but is a lot the only of people don't. What we need is to like you, mm -hmm. you have the rights over your person and your yes. property, and that who uh, defines that is like. I agree with well, you. We can define. We I know agree with you. My point is a lot of people. You know, like, a lot of people don't. A lot of people don't believe in that, though. Right. If you look at oh, certain, no. if you look at certain political philosophies, right. If you look at certain, you know, go all the way to communism or certain socialistic, like people don't even believe. In these inherent property rights, individual do they? Individual rights, right? They yeah, don't believe in the individualism, so they no, they they think of everything collectively. So, but don't you think a lot of no... people that say they defend the communists, for example, they did not really think hard about the, the ideology that they say they defend? Mainly well, the some, ones that some of them have really, some of them have really, really thought shirts about it. and iPhones in their hands. Some. I think they are the ones that did not think hard about what they are defending. So it's like, well, okay, let's go. Study what you actually saying, what you want. Would you live under this time of type of regime? And they're like, no, hell no. It's like, okay, so let's start studying a little bit more or you think you a little bit harder. On what you've you seen all the people voting for Bernie Sanders? So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> He's you not going to win. <laughs> yeah, but like you've got hundreds of millions of people who you think don't the next agree. Hysteria is going to be Trump win 2020 and people are like, what? 
It's Sorry. China conversion now. <laughs> I don't know what what is going to be the excuse. Who 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 is going to blame? Oh, okay, <laughs> okay. I don't know. Maybe me. Um, I don't know. They'll they'll blame. They'll find a way. They're they're already working out who to blame right now. <laughs> I have talked to a lot of people that they can blame. Like I just talked to Fleckus last week, and he's okay, very yeah. pro Trump, and like talking <laughs> about how Trump is not that bad. <laughs> 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 Those videos make me laugh. <laughs> Trump's not it's that bad. Pretty good. Yeah, I agree. Trump's not so, that bad. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm taking over too much of your time, but uh, <laughs> it's just such a good time. And uh, so, the word that we cannot say, can we just at least mention a little bit? Like, are we are we like the SJW fighters against SJW <laughs> fight? I'm not here to fight. I, I don't want to feel like I'm fighting against anybody. Like It's not oh, really no. what I'm... Yeah, let me explain. It's not fighting okay. physically people. Oh, no, I know. I know that. I know. If I need to fight an SJW, I know I'm going to win that one. <laughs> it's like, that is easy. That's no worried problem. <laughs> no, I'm not worried about that. That would, be, that would be unfair. That would be cowardly. Yeah, not... I'm not going to do it. I'm like, okay, I advise you to not enter this fight, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, when did you actually become professional in the music? Was it just after school or? Um, so like I said, I, I, uh, I released my first album 2006, a long time ago. But um, I became a full-time musician in 2011. So I've been doing it full-time since, since then. Oh, and, but uh, that is over 10 years of experience. So like... Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, I saw you, I saw you doing a... Uh, a making of video cut of just uh, rapping recently oh, yeah, and yeah. i was about to ask you like who or your idols in the music who you know influenced you uh like eminem watsky okay. what what is that what is the list that was an interesting two names to pick um <laughs> <laughs> i i thought that because you actually brought me those two names i i felt it was like a oh, mix really? of them oh interesting. yeah i i watched it and it's funny because i'm mixing two white rappers to make <laughs> <laughs> would that be racist oh my gosh people keep not calling racist, me white right. supremacists people let me tell you i'm not white <laughs> it doesn't matter to them. it doesn't matter um what was I going to say? Um, I don't, well, I don't have any idols for obvious reasons, but um, my biggest two influences in mute and hip hop are Jay Z and Tech Nine. Those are my two favorite rappers. I'm also a big fan of uh, Tupac, Nas, um, Eminem, Royce to Five Nine. You know, I, I like a lot of people. I like a lot. I could name artists for, I could give you like my. 30 favorite artists you know there's, there's a lot <laughs> both old school and is you know, there any more where you share these these music references and stuff like Not in really. our spotify or like your youtube channel you could like just start making a little folder mm -hmm. sharing because i bet people were just curious to know what 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 are your favorite songs <laughs> yeah. yeah i think i might have a playlist or two on spotify but um <laughs> So having, having gone through the Oxford school, uh, I saw your, you talking on one of your interviews that uh, was a really good experience that pushed you up. You know, you think it, uh, it's still a good experience people should go through or today it became like a commercial thing or a, a commercial scheme with government or like to push people to go through degrees? Degrees in general? Yeah, <clears throat> I think you should go to I, I don't think most people should go to university in this day and age I think that there are exceptions to that of course So I think if you are one if you are extremely I'd say if you meet at least one of these three or ideally two or all three of them number one if you are Genuinely academically gifted and academically wired and you can get into a very good university um, Then it may be worth considering going to university you should definitely go to university if you need that degree to go into a vocational career, right? If you want to be a doctor, if you want to be a lawyer, if you want to be an engineer, any degree where you need that specific knowledge to go and do that future career, of course, it makes sense to go to university. If you can go to university without encouraging, without incurring any major costs, right, without getting into 
heavy debt. So whether that's through parental help or family help, or it's through getting a scholarship or something like that, then that also is another good reason to potentially go to university. If you meet multiple ones of those, then even better. Outside of that, I don't think, or or, or the last one is if you're going to study uh, STEM, right? If you're going to do science, tech, computer science, engineering, math, something like that, which is high in demand, and you're going to do that at a good university, that's another one. But if you don't meet any of those four criteria, then most people should probably really, really think long and hard about why they're going to university and what the opportunity cost of them going is going to be. Because I don't think people should just blindly go. I think a while back, maybe a couple of decades ago, people, it was more sort of common knowledge that you should just go and then you can work it out later. Whereas now doing that can be very expensive, both in terms of money, in terms of time and in terms of opportunity cost as well. So that's my thoughts on it. Totally agree. Yeah, I think it's even a little bit more on this pushing up culturally. Sometimes the government says, I'll give you this benefit, I'll give you this money to help you, but you have to pay me back. There is a lot of this in Brazil as well. Of course, in Brazil, we have the public schools, we have private schools, we have so many options. But it's still culturally, families like sometimes pushing people that are not decided. And sometimes they pick up, pick, choose something that it's not their career or not what they like will drop or finish something that they will end up being useless. And like I said, and then they have a debt in the end. It's, yeah. it, it, it can be, it's not always like, oh, it's only, well, it's only going to be good for you. Mm. It definitely needs a lot of thinking. And there, and one thing that we always should just be talking as well, that we should talk about this. There's never, there's, it's never late to start, you know, you can no. change your mind anytime and then start. That's true. School. That's true. Yeah. I, I keep talking to my husband. They actually, he dropped school. He started engineering and then he hated it and dropped. He did not finish. Like, why finish this thing? And he keeps thinking. I was like, okay, why not? You know, just find out what you actually like and do it. Yeah. But uh, so I'm, ju book, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just looking at the time. I'm, I'm gonna I'm have. I'm sorry. To, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. To, I just want to talk about your book to okay. do, for you to yes, tell people okay. to. Yeah. His strong advice yeah. just came out. I saw you. How was your hand about signing so many? <laughs> yeah, tiring. Oh. I did my third <laughs> run of the paperback. So, and you give like, can you tell a little bit? It's like, what is that? It's more about bodybuilding, lifestyle, um, okay, diet. Yeah. So it's about um, it's split into a couple chapters. So mindset and motivation, nutrition and training are the three main chapters. So it teaches people how to you know go about building the right mindset and how to actually stay motivated with their goals, whether they want to build muscle, burn fat, gain weight, lose weight, just get fitter, whatever their goal is, it teaches about their, the right long-term mindset to approach the whole task with. Then I go into the basics and fundamentals of nutrition, um, how to track calories and how to manipulate them to meet whatever your goal is. And also the way, you know, breakdown of the fundamentals of the different macronutrients and things like that. And then I talk about training as well, the fundamental training principles that people need to follow. I'll talk about progressive overload, how to do strength training, how it works, and how you sort of have to build it all up essentially. So basically with this book, I wanted to put together a concise guide of all the core stuff that I've learned myself in the 16 or so years that I've been doing my own training and put those into a book, into a guide, which can help people, whether you're a man, a woman, non-binary, any age, help you get in shape, help you get stronger, help you get fitter, help you burn, burn fat, build muscle, whatever your goal may be. And it's helped, you know, hundreds of people, if not thousands of people now. So I'm very, very happy about that. Yeah, people go check his book, mainly in this moment, you know, isolation, <laughs> go read the book, go yeah. work out, take care of diet. Everybody's afraid of getting sick. Take care of your health, you know. Amen. That's definitely. How can we find you? How to follow and talk to you and, you know, and follow your what you're doing, all your arts, you know, it's sure. so much music and advices. <laughs> so uh, my main website is zubymusic.com, Z-U-B-Y music.com. If you want to check out my book or any of my music or merchandise, you can go to teamzubi.com. And then I'm on all social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube at Zuby Music. That's perfect. Thank you very much. I'm sorry for overcoming That's okay. time. That's okay. 
<laughs> and uh, yeah, I'll stop the, the recording now. People, keep checking our interviews. More till next time. <laughs>